The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 20th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's have an extraordinary day. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this during, that, this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got your back. Send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our tiger stand, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a magical, magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got most of the U.S. indices trading the upside. We've got the Dow 35, S&P 18, NASDAQ 106, Russell 7. Uh, semis are up 87. The trannies are the ones that are the, the uh, stinker out there. They're down 14 points. New York Stock Exchange is up 20. Gold is trading up uh, 10 bucks. Silver's up 91 pennies. Light recruit is up a penny. Natural gas up 8 cents. And a 30 Treasury down almost a half a point, printed out at 116.29. Now, our leader in the clubhouse to the upside is Wix. Dot com up 28 bucks, 21%. Nice move there. Lamb Research up 25 bucks, almost 3%. KLA Corp up 21 bucks, nearly 3%. And Biddy up 20 bucks, 2%. Mercado Libre up 17 bucks. That's about a 1% move. Our shakers to the downside, led by Super Microcomputer down 12 bucks. IDEX Laboratories about 12. Uh, Impanima, I M P I N J. Impinge is down about 11.50 out there. Lululemon down nine bucks. Ulta down eight. Aren't you? Aren't you? Is it amazing how I can actually spell and then kind of come up with formulate a word out there? I'm sure I impressed just about everybody. Uh, let's go take a look at. Uh, so what do we want to take a look at? That's what's trading the upside to the downside. You know where we're going to begin here. We're going to begin by taking an analysis of the Dow, the S and P, the Nasdaq, and the Russell instruments out there, just to get a feel for each one. So let's switch over to the white background screens out here, and we'll begin by taking a look at the Dow. So you're going to see here, on the left hand side, you get the Dow Equity Future Contract, followed by the Cash Index, followed by the ETF, the Diamonds, and followed by the Equal Weight. So we, in each of these cases, they have TD9 count tops. What should result there is a pullback to support. Support would be their oscillator and change lines, unless there's profiles above those levels. When I take a look at these set of charts, the answer is they, there isn't. So the oscillator and change line will be the levels to the downside. Now, if price closes above the TD9 count top, and I'll give you each figure, for the Dow Equity Future contract, that will be 4191 Price closes above that and negates that signal, says we're in a strong momentum to move to the upside. In the case of the cash index out here, the cash index also well has a uh, resistance or the, the level to be watching there, 40.051.05. You get it close above that, that says that th that pattern gets negated. The Dow Diamonds, the level that they need to close above, is up at the uh, 401 even Steven number. And when you take a look at the E-Dow, which is the equal weighted uh, uh, Dow index out there. 3304 would be the number. No, that can't be right. Sorry. It can be right, but it's not right. 
3443 would be the number there. So hopefully you took notes on each of those. If any of these instruments close above that signal, then the topping pattern is off. Now, if you take a look at the Dow Jones Cash Index out here, this formed a TD9 count bottom pattern on April the 15th. That level was tested two days later on April the 17th, and then the market basically took off to the upside. So at this stage here, I don't know whether it's going to get tested. We're going to have a similar reaction just uh, from the top to the bottom. If price closes above that, well, that negates that whole signal. But testing it, as you can see, you're just testing the level of support out there. So that's what's going on inside of the Dow instruments. Let's go and take a look at the NASDAQ instruments, the NQ. Here we have TD9 counts for all of the patterns out here. In the case of the NQ, it's already tested, I believe, the TD9 count high, and that's up at 18,760.75. If price were to close above that, it negates that topping pattern. In the case of the index cash index, the level out there is 18,669.50. In the case of the Qs, the number out there is up at 454.69. Now, there is a new profile that is attempting to form. That new profile has resistance up at the 454.69 area and support down at 448.20. The equal weighted uh, Qs out here, uh, that level to be watching is 123.25. Those are the numbers to watch. If price closes above those areas, then for those specific charts, that would be telling you about a strong momentum move to the upside. You'd prefer to see all four of these uh, time frames, uh, all four of these instruments do the same thing out there. They all form the TD9 count tops. And uh, now the question is, do they get negated or not? I don't know the answer to that question. We're trying to find out. You know, we'll take a look at a deep dive into the intraday chart. So I don't believe there's a ton of signals out there. Nonetheless, Let's move on to the S&P 500. That's on your left-hand side there. You've got the cash index. Next to that is the equity future contract. So in the case of the cash index out here, the TD9 count top is priced at 53.25.49. Again, close above that. Tells you about a strong momentum move to the upside. Inside the ES Mini, the number to be watching out here is 53.49. How about the SPY? The number to be watching in the SPY is going to be at 531.52. And finally, for the equal weight for the S&P 500, that's called the RSP. That highs at 168.39. If those get taken out, same pattern, price moves to the upside. But, you know, we take a look at all of these instruments, each of them that have TD9 counts. Now, the cool thing there is if, in fact, these patterns get taken out, it tells us across the board with regard to the indices out here to expect or anticipate a strong move to the upside for the daily time frames. Let's uh, finish this off by taking a look at the Russell 2000. Now, the Russell 2000, I'm not even sure if there's an equal weighted ETF out there or not. I don't have it. I've got the Russell 2000 cash index. Let's start with that. Well, what are we going to start with here, Stevie? Not much. Why not much? Well, that's because it, this does not have a top. It has an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. It needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a sell the D point. That is the exact same thing inside the Russell 2000 equity future contract. But here we do have a new profile that did form on Friday. And that new profile has a sell zone, which price is trading in right now. That's between 2120 cents and 2116.40. If price were to close below 2100, that would suggest to move back to either its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 2082 or below that support, which is at 2059. The IWM uh, also needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a sell the D point pattern. So the Russell's waiting for those, unlike the others that already have those tops in place. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily time frame for each of the equity future contracts, the corresponding ETFs, or the cash indices. We come back to this break. Let's take a look at Zoom for Alt and Natural Gas for Mr. Bill and RDW for Jack inside the Tigers. And of course, I'd love to hear from you as well. 877-927-6648 or Steven tfn.com and any ping inside the tiger's den will do we'll be right back If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Back, uh, folks. So the first question that uh, came in is from Alton, and Alton is looking to take a uh, wants to enter a long trade into uh, Zoom. Zoom here, as we take a look at the uh, charts here, this zoomed up back in October of 2020 to a level 588.84. Folks, you think that Zoom will ever get back up to those levels? I don't know the answer to that question. I can guarantee you one thing. It's not a high volume high out there uh, when we take a look at the uh, monthly time frame. But that's not really what Alton's question was. Alton's question is, can you find me a buy entry area uh, inside of Zoom? Well, on Friday, what Zoom did was it confirmed an A to B equals CD pattern on the upside. So the swing point out here, Alton, was from April the 29th. The volume on that candle is uh, 3 million shares, 3 million 0.34. If we take a look at last Friday's action, as price closed above that, it was 3.1 million shares. So you have a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Its initial price target is around the 65.57 level. In order for it to make that move, it's going to have to overcome resistance that formed on Friday, and that is a bearish structured daily profile. It was tested on Friday. It was tested again this morning. So the key number here to be watching is going to be up at the uh, 6419 level. If price closed above 6419, Zoom should at least uh, resume its move higher and go target that A to B equals CD initial price projection around the 6560 level. And if it's going to get up there, I would look at the weekly chart, and the weekly chart suggests that maybe what price wants to do, because that is a bullish structured weekly profile and price closed above it on Friday of last week, and a second close above it, it being 63.55. So if this week on Friday, we get a close above 63.55, it increases the odds of a move up to the 71.50 level out there. So you're asking for an entry point. 
I would have to say one possibility on an entry point would be the bottom of its daily profile. The oscillator and change line is just below that area, so that would be a zone. So basically, I'd say 6261 would be an area to look at. Is that a possibility that price could get back down there? Well, if we look at Zoom's daily dance activity, I'd say the answer to that is yes. Why would Stevie say the answer is yes? Because Friday was bar number six of consecutive higher closes out there. In the case of Zoom, I'm not even sure if we can find six consecutive higher closes in any of the recent times out there. I'd have to add more data. I'm not going to do that out there. So odds would favor that you could or should get a two to four bar pullback out there. So that's one way for you to also take a look at is if you get a two bar pullback, you know, does that make sense as an entry point for you, two to four bars out there? But from a, a price point level right now, what I would be looking at is around that 62, 61 level. So Alton, I hope that help I hope that helps you out with regard to ticker symbol ZM and a best of luck to you. And as always, thanks so much for your request. Mr. Bill would like to take a look at natural gas, which has been on a tear out there. And in fact it most certainly has formed a bottom the question is a bottom of what significance so let's take a look at the natural gas charts out here first let's take a look at the monthly time frame chart if you were to ask me mr bill the monthly chart has an a to b equals cd pattern of the downside let me move this back to the correct area out there uh let me move this back i don't believe that it's hit that target on the monthly chart um, it really hasn't. So that pattern is still in effect out here. And it's really getting, let me open up the chart here. Let's do this. So we're all looking at the exact same thing. Let me pull it back this way. Let me go ahead and uh, uh, recenter it, so to speak. Okay. So now we take a look at this. I would say odds favor. Now we're going to take a look at maybe A to B equals CD patterns on the daily time frame, Mr. Bill, but Mr. Bill and everybody else. I would say where price is headed to is that monthly oscillator and change line. And that's at about the $2.92 level. As price moves higher, that will move higher. So use that as a range. If price was able to close above its oscillator and change line, and we could come back and take a look at that since December of 2022. That's right. December of 2022 was the last time we saw price above that. So I would say, Mr. Bill, that oscillator and change line on the monthly time frame is really going to be a key level to watch and observe. That could be where price turns down again. Uh, that's at the 292 level. But if price closes above that, then that would tell us about a move up to towards 329. So that's the bigger picture out there. In fact, bigger. speaking of bigger picture, before I look at the weekly and the daily time frame out here, Mr. Bill also wanted to look at the seasonal pattern. So here is a seasonal pattern. For, uh, uh, for natural gas, this takes us back 33 years out here. It suggests that natural gas would peak around the middle of June. But, Mr. Blue, you probably knew that. We've taken a look at this, I think, from time to time. Now, May itself is kind of a, a flattish to a, a move a little bit higher out there. Well, May here, this uh, May, has been nothing but a rocket ship to the upside out there. But you can see you're starting to move toward, as we get into the uh, middle of June time frame, that's when you start to get into one of the unfavorable seasonal cycles out there. The next one begins right around the middle of October, and that usually lasts until the uh, February time frame out there. So this is seasonal. Now, that was 33 years. What's taking place over the last decade? Well, here's the last decade. The last decade says expect to see some type of top around now. Well, that's not the case out there. So I don't really think it's uh, forming. It's uh, following along uh, this uh uh, this seasonal pattern for a 10-year period of time. But let's go back and take a look at what the charts are communicating to us. On a weekly time frame chart, let's open this up. What we have out here is a profile change in trend. Um, and, and it did that on uh, last week on Friday when price closed above 2.436. It remained above that. That suggests higher price. Now, the price target on a weekly time frame, Mr. Bill, is going to be that swing point from January 12th. And the high out there, is in the uh, 302 level. So 302 kind of helping us tie in to the monthly uh, 292 area. So that becomes a range. And when we take a look at the daily time frame out here, the daily time frame has an A to B equals CD pattern. Let me get rid of that box. Up there, I don't need that. You know, and the A point was all the way back here on February 15th. The B point was out here on March the 5th. And then that C point looks like it was right around April the 16th or was the May 2nd level. I'm going to switch to a different set of charts. I'm not going to do that for you just for myself. 
and uh, give you what that next price projection level was. So on that A to B equals CD pattern, the one-to-one -one was at $2.76. Well, we're above that, and now we're headed off to the one-to-one.272 uh, area. Again, you're not seeing that on my screen. It's on a different screen, and that would be about $2.91. Well, we're pretty much close to that, and we're trading inside the swing point from January the 9th out there. The high on that January 9th bar is up at 302. So we'll put it all together. If you're, if you're asking me, what do the charts say is where natural gas is likely headed to and when it will run into resistance it's right in that three dollar range whether it's a prior swing point on a weekly time frame a daily time frame or the oscillator and change line on the monthly if we look at the other intraday time period charts out here the only one to really be worried about at this moment in time is going to be the uh, five hour chart which is going to complete a td9 count at 2 p.m today so if we open up this chart that suggests that we should see a pullback to its oscillator and change line well that thing is acted as support the entire way there was a td9 count pattern also that formed out here on a five hour time frame and that was back at 2 p.m on may the 16th and what took place price pulled all the way back test and reject that green oscillator and change line and it was off to the races out there so watch that area now Let's say price moves below that level, Mr. Bill. The key area to be watching here is the center of that bearish structured profile. And that's at 2.773. So you could be getting a short period, a short time out here, but if price were to close below 2.773, I would say the retracement inside natural gas would take it to 270, 2.708 to be exact, or 2.659. So that's what I see when I take a look at this natural gas, Mr. Bill. As always, thanks so much for the request and being Stevie's wingman. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tigers Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. 
This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to spend a little time, take a look at the charts here for Red Wire Corp. RDW is the uh, ticker symbol. This is for Jack inside the Tiger's Den. So, Jack, here's what we know on a daily time frame. This has a TD9 count top with a uh, new profile that formed last Thursday out there. The TD9 count top level to be watching is the high from May 13th. That's at 508. If price were to close above 508, that tells you about a, a, a continued move to the upside. Now, the top of its profile is $5.10. So how about you and I? We change it from 508 to 510. If price closes above 510, this tells us about a further move to the upside. So that TD9 count so far has really just led to somewhat of a sideways consolidation. With regard to support, you've got the first level of support at about 475, and the second level would be 454. If price were to close below 454, then you'd be looking to move down to 377. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but those would be the levels to be watching if something were to unfold like that. We take a look at a weekly time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart has no topping pattern. It does have a road momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. That tells us that price is moving higher with less relative energy out there. And what that says is if you were to see a bearish reversal, candle that would confirm a road momentum indicator top that would also then suggest that price would go back and target support and right now that's at 428 we don't have that pattern as we speak and if anything we might have an a to b equals cd pattern to the upside the b point would be let me get my cursor out here the week of uh, march 29th the volume on that session was 1.6 million shares. We passed that uh, last week on Friday with 1.5 million shares. So just slightly lighter volume out there. Uh, so that hasn't been confirmed on the weekly time frame. The monthly chart has really been somewhat of a sideways-ish to slightly rising move out there. Look, price did not even come close to taking out last month's low. So this month still looks very bullish. So you've got a daily TD9 count top. If price can take about a close above 510, you should be off to the races to the upside. That's what I see when I take a look at RDW. Now, Friday was three consecutive bars to the downside. So let's take a look at its dance steps out here. And we can see that all of the moves lower out here, recent moves lower, I should say, have stopped after three consecutive sessions out there. So uh, today's going to be at least bar number one to the upside. Typically, this thing rallies for two to three sessions out there. So I would expect that to uh, continue. So that's RDW. Hope that helps you. Oh, you know what else we can do just for the heck of it? There's not a lot of requests out here just yet. So... I, and I have no idea whether this is going to uh, work or not. When I say work, I'm referring, I don't know if the uh, Season X guys have RDW as one of their instruments. Oh, they most certainly do. So let's just take a look, just for the heck of it out here. Uh, Jack, let's take a look at the seasonals. How much data do we have? We have 29 years worth of uh, Red Wire Corp. How is that possible? 1-121. Is this RDW? Because I show that this thing... May have been an IPO in January of 2021. Maybe Jack, maybe Jack, you might know about that. Let me let me see what what this pulled up. Our red row versus red wire. So I don't know that this is the correct. I don't think we're pulling up the same data. So let's do this here, Jack. Let's just simply disregard that. I think you know what's going on at this moment in time. Daily has got that uh, top out there. Weekly looks very good, and the monthly looks good as well. So thanks for the request. As always, let's go on to the request from Hector and Patty. And Hector and Patty want to take a look at Newmont Mining. And Annie M out here, uh, this has a confirmed. Uh, so first question that uh, is being asked is on the weekly uh, the weekly chart, do we have a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern? So the answer is yes, we do. Let's take a look at this pattern out here. We would be starting with the February low. I'm sorry, March 1st low. Um, uh, look at the weekly time frame chart out there. Uh, where, where were you at on this? Let's see. 
A, B, a point from 226. So I'm looking at my chart here. This is the week that ended. So yeah, now I'm sure we're looking at the same chart. So the week that ended March the 1st out there. So the A to B point, we can see that is marked out here. Then price moves lower, creates a little bit of a low on April 26th. The volume was 89 million shares on that swing point when it took out uh, on that candle when it took out the swing point that had 79 million shares. So there's a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern of the upside. It's also a close above. This is going to be key this week or any week. If price is able to close above 43.91, then its CD9 count top will get negated. And if it does that, then Hector and Patty, the A to B equals CD pattern, should give us a price projection of 48.48. That would be the one-to-one. -one. You asked about the 1.618. Well, first the one-to-one's at 48.48. 51.71 would be the 1.272, and 55.82 would be the 1.618. So that's on the weekly time frame. What you'd also like to see, it's the 20th of the month out here, what you'd love to see is for Newmont Mining close above 43.18. What makes 43.18 so special, Stevie? Well, what makes that special is that is the top of its monthly bearish structured profile. If price closes above that, that would be a bullish outcome. How about in the daily time frame? What does price need to do? Well, it's in an A to B equals CD pattern of the upside. It's in several of them. I'm going to simply get rid of those out there. What's important about today's action is price is trading above its TD9 count top that formed on Friday. Now, that high was 43.96. If price closed above that high today, 43.96 that is, then that's telling you about a strong upward momentum move inside of Newmont Mining. Uh, and suggest that that weekly A to B equals CD pattern at 4848 should get fulfilled. Now, the question is, will it overtake that level today? Don't know the answer to that. But the 30-minute time frame says, I'm not so certain about that. Why is that? Because it just completed a TD9 count top. Now, what price should do here, Hector and Patty, is price should pull back to test support. The first level of support 44.17 or thereabout. That, that is the oscillator change line. If price closes below that, the next level of support would be 43.72. And then you have 43.47, which is on a 30-minute basis, a TD9 count breakout level. So you've got a short-term top. Watch to see price's behavior. If it does pull back towards that 44.17 and then it starts moving higher, well, the signal would be neutral, but I would, arc, I would hearken to say that is more likely a bullish signal than it would be a bearish signal. So I'd say it'd be bullish to neutral out there. So you get a short-term timeout that is likely to unfold today. You'd love to see price close above. Again, that number is going to be 43.96. If it does that, it negates its TD9 count top, and that suggests that Newmont Mining is off to the races. Greg M. would like to take a look at Shopify out here. S-H-O-P is the ticker symbol. And Greg is looking for a long entry point. What you, so let me open this daily chart out here. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Am I not good at the alphabet out there? So you do have a wave seven, letter G count. I need my uh, cursor out here. That formed about four or five days ago. The day was May the 14th. So you've got your bottom signal with price basically in that same area. Now today uh, would become bar number nine of a TD nine count if price were to close below 58.13. But even that uh, needs a tick below 56.92 for that count to even come in. So you've got a wave seven count. We come back to this break, let's talk about the issues going on with Shopify that Greg needs to consider as he takes a look at a possible long entry price. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a ticker symbol, SHOP, that is Shopify. This is for Greg M. He would like an entry point. So the daily time frame, we identified that this has a wave seven uh, bottom pattern out there, but price is also struggling to get back inside its profile. It's attempted that this morning. It has not accomplished that just yet. In order to accomplish that task, so that's the first level of resistance. That's at 5901, we're at 5864. If price can get above that, Greg, then you've got another resistance level. That's the asset and change and around 6055. And if you're fortunate enough to get above that, then you've got a sell zone above that area. And that's in between the range of 6319 and 6528. So the point is the charts are saying if you do take a long trade here, you've got a lot of work to uh, do um, up above you. That's not I'm not suggesting that you stay out, but that's what the chart is telling us. Now let's move to the intermediate term time frame, the weekly. And we take a look at the weekly time frame. What took place two weeks ago is a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Wide ranging bar, accelerating volume. I'm referring to May 10th, 131 million shares. Took out a swing point that had volume of 44 million shares. That retracement looks like about a 0.382 retracement. It's certainly not a 61% retracement. When that happens, odds favor that price will do more than a one to one move to the downside. Right now, that one-to-one -one move is approximately the 54-ish area out there. Uh, this could be bar number eight of a TD9 count, but price has got to get below last week's low, whether it's this week or next week or the week after, in order to possibly get a TD9 count bottom. The monthly chart shows that price is trading below its red oscillator and change line. So when it's below that on the monthly time frame, it tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. Those are bearish conditions. So I'm going to suggest that even though you've got a daily wave seven, knowing that you've got all of these other resistance levels above and it hasn't even proven itself to you, I'm going to suggest that you be more patient on this one on Shopify and you wait to see what takes place on the weekly time frame. Now, maybe it never makes that A to B equal CD pattern because it goes on to make a TD nine count bottom before then. But at this stage here, I would be patient and I would wait. Likewise, if price closed above 6054, while well, the wave seven will have taken effect out there, I don't know that it really changes much when we take a look at the weekly and the monthly time frame out there. Let's see if Shopify has any kind of seasonal pattern to it. SHOP again is the uh, ticker symbol. See if that even pops up. And it uh, it does right here. Shopify. 
So now we take a look at it. Let's see how many years worth of data. We've got eight years worth of data here. And we're in a favorable seasonal time period. But, you know, I still am going to pay attention to more what the charts say versus what the seasonal tendency is. And that weekly wide range of bar that took out that swing point with volume and seeing what's going on in the daily time frame and the monthly time frame, that looks more likely to me lower price, Greg. So I hope that's uh, what actually unfolds, that you can get a better entry point inside of Shopify. Now, I want to do one thing. I meant to do that while we were taking a look at gold and silver, and that was to take a look at the correlation because we take a look at uh, Newmont Mining, it looks like we are taking off to the races, and we very well may be. But in order for that to happen, certain things must take place. What are those certain things, Stevie? Well, first, let's simply just start off by taking a look at what its directional correlation relationship is uh, between gold. So I've got the continuous contract for gold up top. Below that is Newmont Mining. And below that is how the two are correlated, directionally speaking, on a three-day average. And on a three-day average, the bars that are above zero tell you there is a directional movement, meaning if gold is moving higher, Newmont Mining is moving higher. You can see there's maybe about 25% of the time, and that's probably being um, aggressive with 25% of the time. But something 25% or less of the time, we have an inverse relationship. Now, that's a three-day average. I can change that average to example, a five-day, which would be kind of – actually, 10-day would be more normal and take a look at correlations. But let's just go see what happens when I change this to a five-day. No, we'll change it to a 10-day. Well, that's the – oh, I'm sorry. That was 35-day. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, here's a five-day. Five day says, boy, it really gets directionally. And well, it's, I imagine we're going to see we get to 10 days out here. It's really, yeah, it's about the same as the five day average out there. Why did Stevie do that? Why did he pull one of those let's switch screens where he may not remember to switch back to the other screen? Good point, And thank you for bringing that up. We're going to go ahead and switch back to the other screen. And then we're going to go to the charts that we wanted to take a look at that says, hey, what's going on with gold and silver? So Newmont Mining is suggesting it wants to break out. We know about the directional core relation. What's going on inside of gold? Well, if we take a look at the June contract, it formed and completed a TD9 count top on Friday. And the price is able to close above that level. That level, by the way, on Friday, Friday's high was 24.2740. We're 24.2690 right now. But a price closed above 24.2740. That's what you want, Hector and Patty. A price closed above that. The TD9 count gets negated on the daily time frame, and it suggests we move higher out there. Now, there's another TD9 count as well. No, I take that back. I take that back. That's not the case. So that's what I'd be watching for on gold. Silver also completed a TD9 count pattern on Friday. You'd like to see silver today close above Friday's high, which was at 31.85. With regard to the GDX, it also formed a TD9 count on Friday. And so you'd like to see price close above that high of Friday, which is 36.89. If all three of those things happen, Hector and Patty, then it just says that our, anal our analysis of, of Newmont Mining, which first we didn't really take into consideration the directional correlation, what was going on inside of gold and silver, it'll say – Hey, those patterns were negated, and we are likely moving to the upside. Now, what gold needs to do on a weekly time frame, it needs to close above its TD9 count top. And that would be the final nail in the coffin for price to move higher. That probably didn't make a whole lot of sense out there, but it is what it is. The high for that TD9 count uh, for the weekly time frame is 24 48.80. Silver already negated its TD9 count top, and it did that last week. And we don't have any kind of a topping signal inside of the GDX for its weekly time frame either. So it's all going to be about the dailies. Watch those three levels out there, Hector and Patty, because if price closes above that, that would be a very bullish signal out there. So hope that helps you out. John C. in the Tiger said, would like to take a look at the TLT as well as the 30-year uh, Treasury. So where did Stevie put that? Nope. I can take a look at the TLT first. So here is the TLT. The TLT is trading where? So there's a new profile inside of the TLT. This form below price, John. And that says that uh, this should be a bullish signal. Doesn't mean that price won't pull back to test support. First level of support would be at 90.86. Second level port support would be at 90.60. Third level of support, which I wouldn't expect it to get back to if this is a bullish move, would be down at the 90.80 level. Now, price gap down on Friday. So on a TLT basis, um, 
you know, there's a couple of different A to B equals CD patterns that you could draw in here. The very small one, which is probably about a 1 to 1.6 1 rate or 1 to 1, point, uh, 1 to 2 level, you've got to sell the D point pattern that occurred on Friday. And that would suggest a pullback towards 90.27. Now, that's the TLT. And that's a daily time frame. But I don't want to just do that. I want to really take a look at basically the underlying instrument out there, which is a 30-year. So let's switch over to take a look at its charts because it probably has different signals than what the TLT had. For example, on a daily time frame, uh, here is the whoops, here's the larger A to B equals CD pattern. Let me see. Yeah, that's the larger A to B equals CD pattern, which says that price wants to move to the upside. But now we're back below that B point. What price is doing here in the 30 year, it's testing a key level of support. That key level of support out here, John, is at 1, 116.28. The price closed about 116.28. We're likely to see it move back to 115.31, 116, basically. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Let's finish off the uh, 30 year for John inside the Tiger's Den. So, John, that key level again on the daily time frame is the center of that uh, bear structured profile. And that's at 116.28 to be exact. If price closes below that, we're likely to head back towards that 115.30 ish level. Now, what you want to watch here 
First, if you look at the 30-minute time frame chart, as price was moving lower this morning, it generated a road momentum indicator buy signal, and that was done at 9.30. But price been unable to get above that red oscillator and change line. The point I want to make is if we see a close below 116.25, that's the bottom of that uh, road momentum indicator signal on a 30-minute basis, that says we head lower. Another area to watch is going to be the five-hour time frame chart. This completed a TD9 count pattern at 9 this morning. If price were to close below at any point in time, certainly by 2, uh, into the close below 116.25. That's going to suggest at least a move back to the 116.09 area. That is its uh, five hour TD9 count breakout level. You had both a TD9 count top and a wave number seven top on that five hour time frame chart. The four hour time frame chart already negated its TD9 count bottom, and that suggests to move back to that 115. So everything is set up here to help you identify which direction price is headed to. The 30 minute says it's not above that red oscillator and change line. So its buy signal, quite frankly, is neutral. So hope that helps you out as always, and thanks so much for your request. Let's finish out the show with Dude wants to take a look at GCT. So let's pull up those charts out there. And a GCT is what? I'm not sure. We don't really need to know. What we know about GCT is it's likely headed back to the top of its daily profile. Price found resistance up in its TD9 count breakdown area at 41 bucks. Couldn't bust it to the upside. Now it's going to try to bust it to the downside or so it appears to be. What is that downside level? Well, the first area, and this has acted as support over the past uh, month or so, and that's at 31.69. That's the top of that weekly profile. If dude price were to close below 31.69, I would then then say the move would be back towards 29.98 to 25.85 to 28.04. So 25.85 to 29.98 would be the likely target for Giga Cloud technology out there. On a monthly time frame, I don't have a lot out there. So I think Giga Cloud likely headed back to 31.69 and again below that, 29.98 would be the likely target. So folks, thanks so much for tuning in on Magnificent Monday. I hope you have one as well. And I look forward to seeing you on Terrific Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Be safe out there. Have a great day.